So now that we've covered how state works, I want to get into using geolocation. So one of the cool features that you get with a mobile phone is figuring out where somebody is. With the geolocation information, you can also use that with other APIs. Say Yelp, for example, you want to search for something, you need to know where somebody is, or Google Maps, you need to know where they are, so we can use geolocation to get somebody's latitude and longitude. All right, so how do we do this? I've got a basic application here. I just have the same view and text field that you have in all the startup apps, the blank app that you get with Expo. Um, I've changed the text inside of it, bumped up the font, used a larger font size, and I've added a few things here above the render method inside of our main component. The first one is the constructor. This is where we would declare our state variable, and we are going to do that. We are going to use state here. So let's create our state object. Component did mount. This is the lifecycle method that runs with React and React Native when your component has finished rendering on the screen. So all the work is done, all the data is there, it's put up on the screen. At that point, component did mount. This is going to, to take place. We can run this method automatically without calling it, without doing anything else. We can just know if we create a method with this name, this is going to run when the page finishes loading. I've got two other methods here, one called GeoSuccess, one called GeoFailure, because when you're using geolocation and you ask for the location of the device, what happens is you're either going to get a success or a failure back from that. There's going to be a callback method that we're going to use. All right, so for our state, what are we going to do here? Well, we've got, we need to have something that's going to hold the error. I want to be able to display any errors that happen. If this GeoFailure happens, I want to write out the message on the screen. When the success happens, I want to write out the person's latitude and longitude. So those are two things that we need. And then we need one that says that yes, it did actually work. So let's create one called ready. We'll set it to false. We'll create one called where. And this is going to be our object with the latitude and longitude inside of it. And we're going to create one called error. And we'll set it to null by default. And we may as well put our latitude and longitude inside of here as well. So I'm going to create my own properties, lat and lng for latitude and longitude. Set them both to null by default. And this is what we're going to populate. Okay, first step, component did mount. The page is finished loading. This starts to run. And I have a variable here called geo options. These are the options that we get for Anytime we're going to make a call to the geolocation object to try and find the person's location, there's three options that we can set. Now, they all have default values, but we're going to set them intentionally to what we want. So enable high accuracy. This is set to true. So this means we are actually going to try to use the GPS on the phone. If that fails, it'll fall back to using Wi-Fi or the cell towers to figure out the person's location. But we're going to try to use high accuracy timeout. This is going to be 20 seconds. So this is in milliseconds. We want to know how long we're willing to wait. And then the maximum age, well, this is how long to store the latitude and longitude for. Once we fetched it once, how long is that information good? Is this going to be an application that the person needs to know the location once per day? They're not moving around. I just need to know what city they're in. Or is it something where the person's moving around and we constantly need to know where they are? So we can just, you know, multiply out some numbers, seconds times minutes times hours, get an age that is appropriate for whatever the application is that we're building. These options, this options object, this is the third argument that we're going to pass to the method. And it is navigator.geolocation, and this is built into JavaScript get current position. There we are. This is what we call the navigator object has a geolocation object, which has this method get current position. It takes three arguments. The first one is, hey, what's the function you want me to call when this thing works? The second one is, what's the function you want me to call when this thing doesn't work? And the third thing are options. So let's put these in here. We've got a method called geo success. We've got a method called geofailure. And 
we have our options object called geo options. And there we are. That's done. Now, the only other thing that I would do inside of here, this is going to start it working. This is going to make our geolocation call. The only other thing that I would do at this point is every time we're making one of these calls, we want to make sure that we're putting ready back to false. So we're beginning a new call. So we'll call the set state method and we'll make sure that ready is false. This way we've got some sort of a loading indicator, if you will, that we can put down inside of here and maybe we're only going to display this message when ready is false. If ready is not false, then we're going to actually display the geolocation information. So let's do that. Inside of here, we'll say this.state.ready. Now we want to do something when this is false. So we throw an exclamation mark in front of it. Now we're saying, okay, if this is false, ampersand, ampersand, whatever I put inside of here, this is what I'm going to return. So I'll take this bit and I'll put it at the bottom here. There we go, save. So this message only appears if ready the ready value inside of the state object is false. So there we go, we've got this up and running. We're good. It's false. We see the message. Now, down below that, my error message. I want to display the error. So if the geo failure function gets called, this means that we failed to get the current position. So we'll call this dot set state again. If I can spell set state, there we are. And the error is going to be set to error.message. So we're going to retrieve the message property from the error object, set that into state on this this.state.error, and that's what we're going to display down here. So this.state.error. If that's not null, then we're going to write something out. And it's going to be a lot like this. We're going to put this inside of here, but instead of writing this message, I don't want to write that message, I want to write out the value of this.state.error. Okay, now we have a problem here. It's the same sort of thing that was happening up here. We want to make sure that error gets cleared out. If we get an error, this is going to write it out, but we're never clearing it out. So back up here, where we set ready to false, we should also clear out our error. So we'll set that back to null, which is a falsy value. And because it's a falsy value, this will only appear if this is not null, if it's not falsy, if there is an actual value here. Okay. So there's that. And then our final part is, hey, I want to write out inside of here, I'm going to write out whatever our latitude and longitude are. Okay, so this.state.ready. If this.state.ready is true, that means that I've got something back because that's what I'm going to do inside of here. If I got to this point, it means the success was called. This method was called because get current position actually got the position and passed it back to us. So we will call this dot set state and we want to set ready to true. Okay, that'll set ready to true. So this will render whatever we put inside of here. We want to put the latitude and longitude inside of here. So we'll make a text style equals styles dot big, same as the other one. And inside of here, we're going to write a message based on whatever we got back. So I want to write out latitude. And then I will write out this dot state dot where dot lat and where dot long. Minimize those. This dot state dot where dot lat. 
and then I will write out the longitude, and that will be this.state.where.lng. Okay, now those are failing. Uh, what do we have missing here? Actually, we'll uh, turn this into a big long string. We'll use a. There we go. We'll use a template string. There we are. So here's our whole thing. This string, the value of this, this string, the value of this. That's the end of it. And from here to here, there we go. That's our whole thing. Okay, that's saved. Now we will hit R to restart this on the console. This is what you need to do every time you get an error. Uh, if it's a serious actual error, come back to the command line, hit R to restart this, and then back in the simulator, you can hit command R twice, and there we are. So we got latitude longitude showing up. So it actually ran this. It did go and fetch it. It came back and it changed our state value of ready to true. So it's running it out, but we're getting nulls here because we didn't update that in the state. We haven't filled this in here at all. So let's take a look. We'll do a console.log with the variable position to see what we actually get back there. And here we are. This is the position object that we get back. And you can see inside of here, we get a timestamp and we get something called chords. So these are the coordinates and this is the timestamp when it happened. Inside chords, it's another object and there is a latitude and a longitude property. There's a speed, there's an accuracy, this is within five meters. Altitude, altitude accuracy. Now, this is obviously faked because I'm using the simulator and I do not have the GPS on my laptop but inside of here and you can do the same thing inside of Android as well you can go into the options for the uh, the emulator uh, in the simulator if I come up to the menu here under debug you can see there's a location setting and if I go to custom location right here this is what I've hard-coded it as right now Whatever value I put inside of here, that is going to be the value that is returned right here. You can see these values are the same as these ones right here. Okay, so let's, in our position object, we need coords.latitude and coords.longitude from inside a position. So position.coords.latitude and longitude will be the other one. And there it is there's the latitude that's coming up. So I want to take these and put them into state. All right, so we've set ready inside of this to set state. We've got ready and let's do the other one, which is where. And we'll set that equal to an object with a latitude and, and a longitude property. The latitude value is going to be position.coords.latitude and the longitude will be position.coords.longitude. Save. Okay. And there we have it. So we can close this and run it again. Come back in here, hit I to launch the iOS simulator. And there we go. It was on the screen momentarily saying, our default message here using geolocation in React Native and then that was replaced very quickly by this because we had already fetched the position so it was still good. Component did mount, this function ran, it actually made the call to get current position after setting these back to the default values. We got the success function called which got the position, we wrote that out in the console which wasn't required but we did and then set state, we're passing the values up into here so they are being set inside of our state object. Anytime you use this.setState to change the value of this, you're causing a potential re-render down here. So we're getting our actual latitude and longitude being written out on the screen.
Okay, so that should give you everything that you need to work with geolocation with React Native. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I will leave the source code for this as a code gist in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.